All right, it is two minutes after the hour, so let's go ahead and get started. So for, uh, welcome to our GitOps 2.0 hands-on workshop. Um, this is setting up your repositories with Argo CD and CodeFresh. Um, in this webinar, Anais is going to, um, you're going to follow along with Anais rather as she takes you from setting up an active Argo CD installation in your cluster con to connecting it with the GitOps dashboard in CodeFresh. If you have not done so already, please take just a moment to open up your CodeFresh account or start a CodeFresh account, which just takes a second, so that you can follow along step by step with Anais. I also have a poll question to help Anais um, learn everyone's expertise level and so how she can kind of craft this webinar. So let me go ahead and launch that poll now. We just want to know what tools and processes you're currently using. Um, so if any of these are new to you and also if you are currently using CodeFresh. Um, so please answer that poll. That'll really help us tailor this presentation a little bit um, and we'll go over those in just a minute. Um, yeah, so while you're answering that, I'm going to go over some housekeeping items. Uh, we encourage your questions throughout the session, but please remember to submit them using the Q&A button on our Zoom toolbar rather than in the chat. Then we can keep better track of them. We don't want to lose track of your question in the chat. Um, this session is being recorded and a copy of the recording will be sent to you by tomorrow uh, from me. So look out for an email from Taryn at CodeFresh. Lastly, please remember to reference codefresh.io slash events for upcoming webinars as we have fresh and informative webinars for you several times a month. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and welcome Anais. Hi, Anais. How are you doing? Hello. Good. Thank you. So let's take a look at our poll responses. And if you haven't responded to the poll, please do so. This really helps us out. It looks like nobody is using GitOps or Argo CD yet. That's probably why they're here. But <laughs> most people are using Docker and Kubernetes. Um, awesome. Nobody is quite an expert with CodeFresh, but they've used it before. And then we have three people who have an account but haven't used it very much, and three people who just opened an account for the purpose. Four people who just opened an account for the purpose of this workshop. So awesome. looks like this, this is exactly the audience we wanted, right? People who want to learn more about CodeFresh, specifically GitOps and Argo CD. So let okay. me go ahead and close that poll. Thank you everyone for your answers. And there we go, I can share the results. You can see them there. And Anais, you can go yes, ahead and take it away for this uh, on this workshop and I will join you again at the end. Thank you. Awesome, thank you, Taryn. Um, welcome again, everybody for joining me this evening, afternoon, morning, wherever you are for this webinar. Um, just a bit about myself, maybe, to say hi. My name is Anais. Uh, I'm a developer evangelist at CodeFresh. I just joined CodeFresh and actually the DevOps space two months ago. So this is all really exciting. And you can connect with me here on Twitter at Orlis Anais. Um, so let's, before we dive into GitOps and what GitOps actually is and how are we going to set up Argo CD and CodeFresh? Um, wh why do we want GitOps? What is it used for? So um, Dan and Victor and others at CodeFresh and others, other folks in the industry have talked about it quite a lot already. Um, overall, uh, there's, there's this presentation from Casey Hightower that he just gave a, uh, a few days ago, actually where he reminds us um, that everything that we do, all the processes, all the tools that we use, they are ultimately there to enhance um, our human to machine interaction, to enhance our existing processes and operations and make them more efficient. So GitOps in itself, you probably, if you're a developer or if you're working in this space, you already use Git. So it means that everything that we do, we define in Git and that allows us to automate our um, resources and, and processes and make them more effective. So why do we want it? Why do we want to have um, GitOps and um, an integration with something like Argo CD? So before we kind of, oh, yeah. So overall, I found, this, I found this tweet that I think illustrates the point quite nicely. Um, this might be how it feels like for some people at some companies to deploy, um, especially on a Friday. It's just this roller coaster of what's actually going on. Um, and that's what we don't want to have. So what we do want to have is uh, to have high observability um, insights into what is deployed, where, uh, what resources are we using, uh, how are they deployed, who deployed them, 
and um, just easy way to figure out if something is going wrong. Uh, so let's dive into the demo. Um, we are going to set up first Argo CD uh, on our local machine, and then we're going to set up the integration with um, CodeFresh and um, deploy also an application in Argo CD and then see how that connects with CodeFresh. So here I have a repository um, that I'm gonna be using. It's a basic React application um, that has a Helm chart uh, that defines my Kubernetes resources. And um, then I have here in CodeFresh, right now I don't have my GitOps dashboard set up. That's something we're gonna do. And then I have here um, my cluster connected to CodeFresh. Right now, um, there is no, there's no Argo CD deployed. So that's what we're gonna do first. So also locally, I have my uh, cloud cluster connected. Um, so I'm gonna be using that. All of the commands and everything that I'm doing here, I will share at the end in a GitHub gist. So you can use that to follow along. So don't worry about uh, following along right now and like in the hurry, that's something I'm gonna provide you at the end. Of the, of the webinar. So first of all, setting up Argo CD, we want to have a kind of a home for Argo on our cluster. And for that, we're gonna set up a namespace for Argo on our cluster. So we're just gonna create that. Um, might take a few seconds. It's created. And now on that um, cluster, we want to, and then that namespace, we want to add our Argo CD um, resources. And what Argo CD ultimately does, it deploys a um, Kubernetes controller that then um, basically what the controller at a like high level does is um, it gets information from us of what we want happening on our cluster and then consistently um, compares um, the information that we gave it to what's actually happening on the cluster. Um, so it's basically consistently checking, is everything okay? Is everything okay? Is everything okay? And if there's a no, then uh, it will inform us. Um, so that's Argo CD. If you haven't, if you don't have um, the client installed yet, you can do that with this command. Um, I'm not going to do that since I already have it installed and it might take some time to do that. Um, again, I will provide all the resources later on. Um, the first part of this demo might be a bit, let's say a bit hectic of like in terms of one command of the other. So next we want to access our um, Argo CD API server. And for that, we're gonna change it into a, a load balancer so we can access it and um, basically forward it with this cute cuddle command um, so we can access it. Um, so then let's just close this and open it up. So it will tell us basically in this public, in this deployment that, oh, or this use of Argo CD that it's not, um, it doesn't have to prep a certificate. We're gonna open it up anyways. And here is the login screen of Argo. Um, now I need an, a password to log in and the password is also provided um, through a command with Argo CD. This is all based on um, the Argo documentation as well as the CodeFresh documentation. So I will share this at the end as well. So you can follow along with those. Um, so this will give us our, our initial um, password. We can take that and um, the username is going to be admin by default and then we can log into um, the application. And right now we are logged in. Um, you probably would like to change the password, um, which yeah, I'm, I'm not going to do right now, but you will you will want to change the password once you're logged in to something that either you can easily store or remember or something. Um, yeah, so right now there's no application deployed here. Um, so we're going to add a new application now. Um, and this is this application as already mentioned at the beginning. So we're going to, you can do all of that also through the command line. I'm just going to do it for just demonstration purposes. I'm going to do it here. Um, 
in the UI, but you can also do it um, with their client. So I'm going to name this React Articles. Um, let me show you the application in a second so you know what's actually being like deployed here and provide some more information. So this is my repository. Um, then I'm providing here basically the path to the Helm charts that I'm going to be using. You can also use any other uh, Kubernetes manifests as long as Argo, basically Argo wants to know what is your, Victor, do you want to jump in? No? Okay. Uh, I just saw Victor joining. Maybe he wanted to add something. Um, awesome. So uh, yeah, I'm basically going to tell Argo, hey, this is what I want to deploy. This is what uh, the deployment is ultimately going to look like. Um, here, I'm going to provide the cluster uh, or like, yeah, that I want to uh, use to deploy my application at. Um, if you're using a different cluster to the cluster where Argo CD is running, then you have to do some additional configurations. Um, the namespace, I'm going to just put into the demo namespace. Um, and then I can go ahead and create it here on Argo. And right now, as you can see, it's out of sync. So I can um, just ah, something else. I set it to manually synchronize. So I have to, in this case, I have to invoke the synchronization, um, which is which I do because I want to um, basically invoke. So whenever I make a change to the repository, I want my Codefresh pipeline to run and then trigger the synchronization with Argo. So now my application is synchronized here. Um, now we want to go ahead and connect it to our Codefresh account. So this is my Codefresh account, like already shown at the beginning. Right now, I don't have any um, GitOps application connected. So we can either do it through here or we can go to our account settings. And if you're already familiar with Codefresh, you might be already familiar with this site here um, that basically allows you to um, connect various integrations with, with uh, Codefresh. So we're going to go to the GitOps integration. And once we say we want to connect to Argo, it's going to provide us the commands um, that we need to connect to Argo. So in this case, um, I already have my Codefresh client uh, installed. So I'm got, just going to go ahead and install the uh, Argo CD agent. So I'm going to open it up here. Let's use a new terminal. And then once we connect it here, it's going to, it might take a few seconds. Um, it's going to ask us several questions um, that we basically have to kind of fill out so it knows what it's supposed to do. Supposed to connect. Let's wait. Are there many, maybe any questions right now? Taryn? No While questions yet. Now. If you all have okay. a question, go ahead and pop it into the Q&A. I did just awesome. share the, um, the doc that shows this kind of integration that you can follow along with as well. And Anais, if you have your GitHub repository that we can go ahead and share now, um, that would be wonderful in case people are super speedy awesome. and want to follow along with you. If you Let's just add that. Let's do that. Where's the chat? the chat? Where's the chat? It's on your toolbar, which sometimes gets hidden when you're a presenter. <laughs> Q&A more chat. You can send, send it to me. Uh, okay. okay, I got it. So you can go ahead and clone this repository. It's basically, well, here it's running on my um, <laughs> local host. So it's basically just a simple React application that displays different articles. Um, but I can check. Okay, yeah. So this connects basically to. Um, it's just an API that displays different articles from Hacker News, and I can just delete them, or I can do different searches, for example, GitOps, and then it will display the articles. Um, so let's check if it's ah now it connected. Um, so here it's connected to my. Google Cloud Cluster, and then I'm going to use um, Argo CD as the integration name. In this case, I want to uh, provide my username and password. The password is, or the username is admin, and the password I can take from here and just plug it in there. 
and now it's testing a connection. It's asking me if I want to import all existing applications that have an algo running to Codebridge, uh, which I do want to do. And also to yes. And now it's basically setting up the connection to uh, Codefresh and I will be able to, uh, once it's synchronized, it should show that it's healthy. <laughs> um, so we will see once this is, this is done here. Um, yeah, that usually takes also a few seconds. Since you have just a minute, Anais, I do have yeah. a couple questions. Um, awesome. The first one is from Simeon. Can you integrate with Jenkins to multi-cloud interface if, if configured? You mean uh, code? Hmm. I'm not sure in what scenario. Maybe if you could, yeah, maybe if you could elaborate a yeah. little, Simon, and yeah. then we'll come back to your question. So maybe if you like, if you could elaborate whether you mean like integrating Argo with Jenkins. I'm not sure in what use case you would want to connect Codefish with with Jenkins and Argo. Um, but maybe if you like, if you specify the use case, we could provide further information on that. Yeah, go ahead and type that in the chat or in the Q and A's, Mayon, and we will will clarify. And then we have another question awesome. from Chandu as well. Um, mm -hmm. Could you explain? And this is kind of just a, a general question: the major difference between regular DevOps flow and deployments and GitOps. So, um, so I can I can provide him my perspective since I mentioned I'm just new to the DevOps space since like two months. So I'm not hundred. I'm I'm basically that newbie who just got introduced to CI/CD tools right from the beginning. So I'm really used to using Codefresh um, as like my the, yeah um, testing integration. God knows what flow. <laughs> so um, what you basically do with Argo is you want to make sure that um, your application is always in, in the right state, let's say. Like you tell it, I want it to be in this state. I want it to look like such. And um, Argo CD, I will dive into that a bit later in the demo, is basically going to make sure that that's the case. And if it's not the case, it tells you why it's not the case. And um, then you have options through Codefresh as well to, to make sure that your application is deployed as the way you want it to be deployed. Um, so it's basically an extra like mechanism of like making sure that what's happening is what you want to happen and that everything that you have deployed is visible in such a way that you can, um, yeah, that you know what's going on. And he did okay. elaborate a little bit. Sorry, I didn't okay. read the entire thing. It is in the chat. Um, but he said, what I um, meant DevOps process of, de of uh, deployments is whenever I push my, my code to a Git platform and whenever the CD tool I configure to my repo, it deploys mm -hmm. my app to the target. If there is any HPA or VPA configured in my Kubernetes environment for auto scaling, that happens. Um, how does Git the GitOps engine react to the auto scaling when the auto scaling actually happens, either HPA or VPA? It's a really good question. Um, maybe Victor has has further thoughts on that, if he's here, if he's in the state where he can answer. Otherwise. I'm happy to get back to the question later on or reply with more detail, but yeah. And then, sorry, we had um, Simon uh, responded as well to his original question about Jenkins. Um, he says, let's, uh, let's say, can it run Argo, Argo CD on AWS and Azure with the application? So, Hmm. Um, so in the case, well, in, in this case, I, we are highlighting specifically the, the integration of Argo in, in uh, Codefresh, which I'm going to dive into in this part of the repo. Um, so it, it's a different use case. Let's, let's approach it that way. It's a different use case, and I believe a different discussion. Um, you can integrate any cloud provider into um, Codefresh itself. So that that would be possible directly on Codefresh. Um, okay, yeah, 
Okay, awesome. yeah, let's Thanks go ahead and continue. <laughs> Sorry yeah. to interrupt with all uh, the questions no, that's in that great. break that's there. Great. And I, I see a couple more questions, but we'll hold those until just a little bit later. Thank Sounds you. Sounds good. Okay, so as you might have seen already, um, it in, it's indicated here that we are basically connected to Argo and that the agent is um, healthy. <laughs> and we can go ahead and check out our GitOps dashboard. Um, as you can see here, similar to an in the Argo CD interface, um, it basically says our, uh, like what's connect, what's deployed on our cloud cluster um, is the same as what's defined in Argo. And it's gonna here basically indicate the same state as what we can see on Argo. So we can go ahead and open this up. Um, you will have, if you have multiple applications in Argo itself, you would see multiple um, applications in your GitOps dashboard. So this would be just one of them. Um, and this is basically the information that's then provided to you that you want to have when you're using GitOps um, to reach that high observability and um, reassurance of, of your deployments. Um, so in this case, we can, for example, if you would have a long-lived application, let's say, where you make multiple deployments to um, not in this case, an application that you just deployed, that's quite, that's fairly simple. Um, but for example, if you have multiple microservices running, et cetera, then you would have, uh, you would be able here to track the state of your application um, over time. So you would be able to see, for example, when, what got deployed, and then you can see who deployed it. And you can also connect additional um, information such as the pull request that is related to that deployment and um, the, yeah, the issue in your, in your JIRA account. So you can access all of that here as well. Um, so what else? Um, just to demonstrate maybe quickly how um, how Argo CD basically detects that um, the state of your application is different. Let's go ahead and jump to the Kubernetes insights. Um, so in this case, as mentioned, I'm connected to my Kubernetes cluster. I have here all of my Argo resources. I can also access the application right here. And then here's the application that I just deployed. Um, as you can see, here's my uh, Docker image and uh, basically any information that I have here related to it. So I could go ahead and modify, obviously you wouldn't want to do that, right? Um, I can modify the application right here through the UI um, and then make changes. So like mentioned before, right now the application is in a healthy state. Um, and if I make changes here through the UI, it will automatically um, make changes here in Argo. So it's like basically it's it realized that I made changes to the to the application being deployed on my cluster. And it's saying, hey, wait a minute, there's something going on here. Let's try to sync. Um, and in this case, it's out of sync, the application. So if I try to sync again, um, as mentioned, I have set it to manually sync, so it won't automatically sync with my application. So if I try to sync again, um, the synchronization will fail. So it won't like it basically tells me, hey, yeah, there's something, there's something different <laughs> um, in the in your deployment versus what you said you want to have. So in this case, I can see also here it provides like additional insight on the difference of what I have done here. So I made those changes from basically this is what is supposed to happen, what's supposed to lo look like my deployment, and this is what I just did, the changes. So it tells me I can't sync. I can either force sync here or I can just um, revert the changes either through the UI itself, or I could also make rollbacks through the GitOps dashboard. So I can just make the changes. And once I make the changes, um, <laughs> it will basically, okay, right now it doesn't want to connect. Um, let's see. Let's maybe to it again. Anyway, so if I if I make changes again, um, it will then be in the in the let's say Argo defined state again on my cluster, um, and be able to sync. So here we go. Um, so now I could sync again. The application. I can also do the same thing. Through my through my uh, code fresh pipeline, I'm going to tell you in a second um, how that how that would look like. Um, but as you can see, my application is again in a healthy state. Um, I can check the application also in GitOps, and I can see that the changes have been made um, here. So ultimately, you wouldn't want to make changes through something like the UI. You would, if you're using GitOps, you want to make changes um, to your 
yeah, cloud cluster um, through Git. So everything that you, any change that you're making, everything that you do uh, should be defined in Git itself. Um, so we can also use our um, Codefresh pipeline. I'm gonna check that out here. I already prepared it before the webinar. That's also something you can find in the docs. So the pipeline um, is basically the one that you would be able to find in the in the docs as well. It's based on uh, on that. So check out the the Codefresh documentation for further information. So I basically have here a basic Codefresh pipeline that uh, basically clones my my resources, my repository. Then it builds and pushes the Docker image to my container registry. In this case, I'm connected to the Docker Hub, and then it adds need like additional information to that image, um, such as the, um, like what PR is it connected to, uh, what JIRA issue, et cetera. And then I can have additional steps here, such as um, what I want to happen before the application is synced with Argo and what I want to happen after. So for example, I could run specific tests before and after, depending on what I want to do. Um, so you can define all of that here in, in your, Codefresh YAML file. Um, if you're new to Codefresh, um, yeah, that's basically the Codefresh. Uh, that's how you define your Codefresh pipeline. Um, so this is these are the steps. This is this is the clone step. Then we have here the build step. Um, then we enrich the image information, and here are the Argo specific steps. In this case, those are just dummy uh, commands that you could replace with, with actual commands <laughs> to do something on your on your repository, on your Docker image. Um, yeah, so this is the, the demo that I wanted to show. Let's move maybe on to, to more Q&A and I could dive into further, further aspects uh, depending on the questions. Sure. All right. So I actually um, did ask um, one of our team members, Costas Capilotis, about Chandu's question. And uh, Chandu, if you haven't seen that yet, I did add a link that you can ignore auto scaling and any other parameter. Um, and it's a link to just the Argo project. So if you want to take a look at that and let us know if that helps you. Um, we also have another question. Anais, um, about if it, this can integrate with Spinnaker and Kubernetes. Can you explain that a little bit? So, so I actually haven't used Spinnaker before, so I can't answer that part. Um, so excuse my, my newbie ignorance, let's say. But basically, um, Codefresh is directly integrated with Kubernetes, and I can basically, all the images that, well, um, every step here is defined by container images. So it's basically as extensible as you want it to be in terms of what, what the Codefresh pipeline itself can do. And then um, Argo CD is directly connected to my Kubernetes cluster. So it, it runs in my Kubernetes cluster in this case. I could also have it running in another cluster. Um, and it basically, uh, basically when I tell it to that the deployment here, um, like that's the deployment, when I tell it, that that's the yeah, that's the Helm chart that I want to deploy. Like that's what I want to have running in my cluster. Um, then it basically takes those Kubernetes manifests and it deploys it on my cluster automatically. Does that answer the question? Yeah, let us know if that answered your question regarding uh, Kubernetes, okay. uh, Diraj. And Victor added in the chat that regarding Spinnaker, there's no need for Spinnaker when using Argo CD um, for deployments, because I believe Argo CD is doing the deployment side that, that I believe that Spinnaker would normally do. Um, so if you all have any more questions or anything else that you would like to see um, from Anais, please let us know. You can add those in the chat or in the Q&A. Remember, we will send you a copy of this as well as all of the links to her GitHub repository and the docs so you can follow along along with the recording of this video. Um, and sounds like that was um, the right answer for, uh, for Diraj there regarding um, Spinnaker and Kubernetes. So thanks for that. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll stay open for a couple more minutes if you all have any questions. And like I said, reminder, we're going to send you all of these materials so that you can follow along yourself. And actually, let's see, I think I have another question coming in. Um, 
Yeah, why do I need CodeFresh if Argo is doing CD? So, well, it's a good question. So Argo CD is just, um, maybe I haven't explored Argo CD as, like to its fullest, but basically Argo CD is handling the deployment part of it. So it's basically saying that this, this is what the deployment site so should look like. But uh, CodeFresh does like everything before before that, in terms of what what tests do you want to run, what um, additional steps that you want to have before you do the deployment itself, um, before you then deploy to your given environment. It also so the main point after deployment and after deployment. Yeah, so good point, Victor. Thank you. So it's also like after. So obviously, is focused on the deployment specifically. So you have like things that happen before and things that happen after, and th so the goal of CodeFresh and integrating Argo CD with CodeFresh is basically to have it as like a rubber around, like uh, around it of like the deployment itself. So you have, I mean, I showed you for instance here that I have my Kubernetes cluster. I have my, in this case, my GitOps. I also have my, um, well, my Helm charts and anything in my Docker images um, for my Docker hub, all accessible through CodeFresh. And that allows me to have like anything that I'm doing, I can just basically go to CodeFresh instead of having to open and make the manual connection, let's say between uh, five different applications and environments. Um, so that's basically where, where CodeFresh comes in. I, I, I know that this demo was quite heavy on like the Argo CD part. Um, so the main point was basically to demonstrate like this is what happens when you when you do a deployment and that's how your application or like how Argo CD checks that your application is in the um, in the right state. And if it's out of state, then it will inform you and you can have those additional insights through the GitOps dashboard. All right, thanks, Anais. And I have one more question so far. Feel free to enter your questions mm -hmm. now um, if you have any more. Um, how easy would it be to extend one of the steps to meet our needs? It depends, I guess, what's you, I guess you're referring to the um, pipeline itself. Um, Um, yeah, so I guess so perhaps you, just one of adding a, a new step. Yeah, a, a customized yeah. step to the pipeline. So you can so well, let me show you we have the step marketplace with like a vast amount of different steps um, that are that you can integrate into your code fresh uh, pipeline. So any of these you can you can add, you can also write your own um, own steps. It's basically a YAML file. You can find the um, how to write own steps in um, in uh, the docs. But also, you can run any of the GitHub actions directly in CodeFresh. So you can also reuse those. Um, but yeah, we have like this really huge step marketplace um, where you can see like a few here. Um, so you can basically extend it how like depending on your needs. <laughs> how far you need it. Every step is based on container images. Yeah, and I think um, Victor's saying as well, you know, you can create a container image with just a few lines of YAML and that's it. As long as it fits into a container, then you can create your own custom step. Um, so hopefully that's uh, that answered that question. And let me see, I might have one more question. Um, yes, is it only in YAML or can I take uh, Python or other languages as well? I haven't tried that. I'm not sure. So yeah, everything um, in CodeFresh will be in YAML if you're using CodeFresh. Um, however, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm sure that you can use Argo CD perhaps with, um, with different languages. And Victor said, yeah, anything that runs in a container can be used. All right, looks like we have some chat still going on <laughs> um, in the chat here. Uh, let's see, I just wanna make sure that Chandu is seeing all your responses, Victor, because if you'll change that maybe from all panelists to all panelists and attendees, he should be able to see your responses because uh, I've lost track. <laughs> There's quite a bit of chatter going on here in the chat. Also, if you want to continue the conversation, please join us in our community forum and we would be happy to 
to keep the chat going there as well. Maybe, Sounds Taryn, good. you can drop a link to the form. It's, what should I? <laughs> yep, let me add that real quick, just a second. Here's our Code Fresh, yeah, community forum. So feel free and ask any questions there. And let's see, Chandu asked, do, um, do I have to do anything in GitOps engine side to make it ignore my HPA or VPA or optimizer, et cetera? So I think, um, yeah, Victor is, is chatting a little bit with Chandu about this as well. This was um, his original question. Um, so I think we can, we'll take that, that question offline, Chandu, and maybe we can have kind of a, a conversation and after we've looked at those docs a little bit further um, about that, that HPA or VPA optimizer. Victor said, um, you need just a few additional lines in Argo CD definition. Perfect, he said, thank you. Wonderful. Well, thank you, um, Anais, for running thank through you. that and answering all of your all of the questions. Thank you to the audience for all of your great questions. Um, and just a final reminder, I'll send you this the, the recording um, as well as all of the links uh, to the documentation and GitHub repository to you by tomorrow at the latest um, so that you can walk through this yourself. And please feel free and yeah, ask questions on the CodeFresh community forum or on our website using, using our chat bot. Those are real people, not just bots. <laughs> so you can definitely ask questions there as well. So thank you everyone for attending CodeFresh Live today. I hope you have very happy holidays and a Merry Christmas and we will see you in the new year. Thank you. Bye.